Today, I'm going to go over the implementation of dynamic memory allocation in C. So the previous video, I talked about the basic concepts behind it. In this video, I'm going to go over how to implement it. So right off the bat, this is the example I used in the previous video. If you haven't saw it, a basic review we call malloc. Malloc stands for memory allocation. And in the brackets, we pass 10 multiplied by the size of int. And size of int, that just gives the, the size of an integer, which is going to be 4 bytes. So by multiplying this by 10, we're basically saying we're allocating enough memory for 10 indices. And malloc will return the pointer to the memory address in the heap where we allocated memory for this array. And since malloc returned, returns a void pointer, which basically means it points to anything, it's a good practice to include this this int pointer in brackets. That's a typecast basically saying we're converting from a void pointer to an int pointer. That's a good practice to get into, though sometimes you don't need it, sometimes you do. It's just a good practice to, to do it. Another good practice, it's always a good practice to include this multiplication by size of integer. We know that an integer is four bytes, so we could just put 40 instead of 10 times size of int, but it, it's still good practice to do that. That way you're very explicit as to what you're allocating memory for. So this is one way of doing it. Another way you can allocate memory is by using calc. So what calc does is there's two differences. One, it uses two parameters instead of one. So instead of one parameter in malloc, that's just the amount of memory in bytes that we're allocating. Calc, we're passing in, first of all, we pass in 10 in this case, which the first parameter 10 is referring to the number of elements, the number of indices. So 10 indices. The second parameter is the size of the indice, the index, sorry. So which is going to be the size of, of an integer, which is four bytes. So that's one difference with calc. So it's even more explicit. Another difference is calc will actually initialize all of the data, all of the memory, all of the bytes to zero. Now this can be useful in some situations. It can be useful in some situations, but um, but what this does, it actually can run less efficiently if you're using it just instead of just normal malloc, because malloc typically it just runs in O at one time, it runs it's in constant time, while calloc will run in in linear time. So calloc may take longer. It might be less efficient. Yeah, less efficient. And lastly, when when allocating memory for a string, a care pointer, we do the same process, though a common mistake is to do this. The length of the, of the string is 10 bytes, so we allocate enough memory for 10 bytes. The problem with this is strings in C have a, a null terminator. So if I declared a normal or just a static string like this, ah, there we go. This is technically six long. Sure, there's five characters, but the sixth one is the null terminator. And as we see, it says six because it reserves memory for the, for the null terminator. So don't forget to include that plus one there. I've made that mistake before and, have co and it's cost me hours of confusion. Don't make that mistake. Lastly, before we can proceed with, in with initializing and setting the, the values, we have to check if malloc actually worked. If malloc fails, instead of returning the memory address of the memory we allocated, it'll return null. So we can check if array equals null. Well, if it equals null, then we'll just print an error message, error out of memory. And then we can exit. I just put exit there. I forgot the y in memory. This is the same as return zero. I could put this instead, but eh, I'll put exit there for fun. We could do the same thing for array two. We could do the same thing for string. So this is checking that if all of them, if any of them are null, if any of them are null, then memory allocation failed and the program is done. Now that we have the memory, 
we know for sure that it's worked. We don't have to put else because as you can see, we exited the program each time. So we don't have to have an else condition. We can just keep going. Now, let's say, you know, let's, let's, let's give, let's give our um, array some values. Let's say array at i has been equal two times, two times i, just, just for the sake of this array, array two at i will equal i times i. Let's say we do that and then print them out. I'll just print f integer and then array at i. And I forgot the y in array. Keep missing the y today. I don't know why. <laughs> Little joke. Then I'll make a line break and then I'll do the same for array 2. Alrighty. Now, when I run this, as you can see, I get the correct values for them. That's awesome. That's what we want. Now, let's say that we're done with this memory. Well, we're done with it. We don't need it anymore. We don't need array or array two. We're done. So what we can do is we can just use free. We can free the memory by calling free and passing in array. This will pass in, you know, because array, you know, has the, the location in memory, the memory location of the allocated memory. Free will just set it free. But now array is still pointing to, um, to the memory address, even though it's been freed. So if I copy this, well, I'll also need this too. You see how I get garbage values here? I get something random. I didn't, I didn't want that. And I run it again. I get something different. That's undefined behavior. And this is also called this array becomes a dangling pointer, which means it's still pointing to the memory that was allocated, but it's not allocated anymore. It's free. So to prevent that, we could just set it equal to null. And then we're done with that. And we can do the same for array two. Bam, like that. Now, what if we wanted to, instead of just freeing them right away, what if we wanted to resize them? That's another perk of dynamic memory allocation is if, if later on we need to resize an array, well, we can do that. So how do we do that? So what we do is we'll just declare a new int array for, um, let's call it temp. And instead of calling malloc, we're going to call realloc. This is reallocation. Then what we pass in, it takes, it takes in two parameters as one's a void pointer. This will just be the, um, let's say array. This is the memory that we want to reallocate the size for. And then we can pass in the size. So let's say instead of 10, I want 12. So I'll just make this 12 instead. Alrighty. Now I can check if temp failed, if, if realloc failed. Well, then I could just say print error out of memory. But otherwise, otherwise, um, we'll set it to temp like this. We can handle this however we want. And the reason why we have this temp here is because sometimes realloc might fail. Sometimes it might fail. So we just, we, instead of it, instead of declaring it like this, instead of declaring it like this, if mem if realloc fails and it returns a null, then we have a memory leak. And going to go back to the diagram, what a memory leak is, is essentially, let's say we're referring to the, this block of memory over here, this blue block. Um, and let's say, you know, we overwrite the, the data with something else. So now we lose the pointer to this memory address. However, that memory is still being allocated. So we can't do anything with it. We can't 
free it and then allocate it for something else, that memory is lost forever. That's a memory leak. Well, it's lost for the duration of the process. That's a memory leak. We want to avoid those. So this could cause a memory leak because if it returns null, then array is now null. And now we've lost the address for the, for the previously allocated memory. To avoid that, that's why we set it to a temporary. It's just a safety measure. And then later we declare it as temp. Now, what realloc is doing, it's doing three things in this, in this step. So let's do this. So realloc is doing three things. One, malloc to temp. So malloc's memory to temp. Two, it will, um, it will copy the contents from array temp. Then three, it will free array. So first it allocates memory for temp. Two, it copies the data from array to temp. And three, it will free the memory for array. So now this memory, when realloc works, this memory is freed. But it was safely copied into temp anyway, so it's fine. And then we declare array as temp to say, okay, now um, so array was already freed, so there's no memory leak. And now we're just setting it to that new mem memory that we allocated. So let's re let's re go in, in here, and instead we'll go to twelve. I said thirteen. I meant twelve. Let's say three times i now. Ooh, now we're being fancy. And then we go over here. And we print we print them and let's see let's see what we get. Does it work? It works. As you can see, the memory is now the new values we set. And we have 12 values instead of 10. One last thing that I want to go over too is when resizing a a uh, string, you might be tempted to let let's say let's say we want to resize it by adding one extra character to be to be like a extra memory efficient let's say so we say string is equal to realloc um or it'll be temp sorry it'll be here temp I already declared temp so it's called tmp for temp and we're reallocating string and then we say len plus one because we're adding one character right right <laughs> time size of here So this is another common mistake because yes, we are adding one extra character or let's say we're adding 10 extra characters. We are adding 10 characters to this. Absolutely. But the thing is we still have the null terminator. So if we want to add 10 characters, we have to say 11 instead of 10. If we want to add one character, we have to add two instead of one. Then of course we can go through the same, we go through the same thing. I'm just gonna copy because copying is efficient. C <laughs> equals temp. Right, and then we can do whatever we want with that. And then of course to free it, one last time, we just do we just call free to string, and then to prevent a dangling pointer, we just set it equal to null. And that's the basics to implementing dynamic memory allocation in C. We went over how does malloc work? How do we use malloc? How does calloc work? And how do we resize memory using realloc? What realloc does behind the scenes and that and that stuff. And also how do we free memory too? So we freed it at the end. It's always good good uh, practice to free it at the end. Um, even, if, even if the compiler might free it automatically, it's better to free it at the end anyway, or maybe we're done with it early on and we want to free it earlier. That's another thing too. That's powerful about free. So we went over all of these things. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for, for watching and have a good day.